I know you guys must be interested the real history behind the show Kingdom. Why Kingdom was set in such a period of history? Let's just talk about the TV show first. The Kingdom was set during Korea's Joseon Dynasty, which is three years after the Imjin War, also known as the Japanese invasions of Korea of 1592 to 1598, where a natural plague resurrects the dead spread across the Korea. While within the New Kingdom movie, Ashen of the North, a Georgian women's vengeance lead through the plot. So, what is the real history between Korea, Japan, Georgian, and even Ming Dynasty of China at the time? Why this part of the history is so perfect for the set of the show? We will find out in this video. It is year 1582, Toyotomi Hideyoshi united Japan and ended the Sengoku Warring States where various shoguns and local lords fought to rule Japan. After decades of constant war, samurai and soldiers of Japan are strong and ready for war. Toyotomi even sent letters to the king of Joseon, Korea, demanding Korea to yield and send loyal prince to Japan as hostage, so Korea can open the path for Japan to eventually conquer the Ming Dynasty of China. The king of Korea did not think Toyotomi is serious until year 1592, when an army of approximately 158,000 troops gathered at Nagasaki and Tsushima. Yep, the same place the game goes of Tsushima is set, and then they sailed across the strait to Korea. Besides the samurai swords and armor, the Japanese army are also equipped with advanced at the time aquebirds and muskets, traded from Portuguese Empire or copied from the European design, perfecting the mass firing techniques as well, known as Tanigashima matchlock. Of the 158,000 Japanese invasion forces, there are 9 divisions each of them headed by the best general and warrior of the Sengoku era, especially the commander of the 1st Division, Konishi Yukinaka, and commander of the 2nd Division, Kato Kiyomasa. Konishi was known for his negotiation skills, business mindset, and talent in commanding fleets. He was also baptized under the name Augustine, a trusted Christian commander under Toyotomi. Konishi played a major role in the war to come. We will talk about the interesting rivalry between Konishi and Kato in the coming episode. From May 23, 1592, when Konishi arrived at Busan, Korea at nightfall to the capital Seoul was captured on mid-June 1592 by Konishi and Kato. Only one month has passed. During that month, multiple battles had been fought out which leads to the breakdown of the Korean forces on the land, and multiple Korean cities were destroyed with no survivors. At Downey, not even dogs or cats are spared as Kinoshi's intention to terrify the Koreans into submission, showing them what price they will pay for resisting. By July 20th, 1592, two months after the landings, the 1st and 3rd Divisions entered the deserted city of Pyongyang, marked the military victory on land of Toyotomi over the Joseon Korea forces. After Pyongyang's defeat, Ying Yong, the Joseon king, escaped all the way to the Yalu River. Ever since Joseon's Korea was founded in the early 14th century, there has been no major war in Korea for 200 years. Joseon Korea's founding policy regarded itself as Ming Dynasty's vassal state, and after Yuan Dynasty's failure in invading Japan, learned from Yuan Dynasty's mistakes, Ming Dynasty listed Korea, Japan, as the countries that were never invaded again. The peace made Korea army weak and compared to the Japanese force while they are also unprepared. Since Yin Yang, the Joseon king started the run, multiple urgent messages have been sent to the court in the forbidden city of Beijing. 
the Emperor Wan Li of the Ming Dynasty, a 29-year-old ambitious young man, convinced of the inevitable invasion of Japan into the Liao area if Korea should fall, decided to send Ming army to Korea's aid. However, this warning effort is easily said than done. Timing is not on Korea and Ming's side. The same year Japan invaded Korea, a Chalhar Mongol called Pubei, who had previously submitted to the Ming Dynasty, started a rebellion against the Ming in the Ningxia province. Wan Li had to allocate major military resources to deal with the rebellion first before sending aid to Korea due to how close Ningxia is to Beijing. It is during the Ordo's campaign at Ningxia, a famous Ming general Li Ru-song shines. Li Ru-song is the son of the famous general Li Chenliang, who climbed from poverty in childhood to become one of the most decorated Liaodong region general, fighting various battles against Jurchen and Mongols. Being the son of general and growed up near border, Li and his brothers all took major commanding rank within the Ming army. During the first six months of the Ningxia campaign, the rebels withdrew forces behind the high wall of Ningxia. Ming forces were unable to breach the city defenses and suffering heavy casualties. Li Ru-song arrived end of July and immediately organized a major offense by piling construction materials to scale the wall. Though unsuccessful, rebels are in a desperate situation. Li then commanded Ming soldiers to dig open the water dam on Yellow River to flood the rebels' castle. By September 6, 1592, the water around the city is 9 feet deep. By October 12, the rebel finally gave up after the north wall collapsed underwater. Li and his following commanders are all promoted and immediately diverted to the Korea theater. Now, we have not talked about Jurchen yet. Jurchen is a term used to collectively describe a number of East Asian Tangusic speaking peoples who lived in the northeast of China, later known as Manchuria. Generally lacking a central authority, many Jurchen groups fell under the influence of neighboring dynasties. They achieved paying tribute and holding nominal posts as effectively commanders of border guards. Ming classified Jurchen into three groups. 1. Jianzhou Jurchen are the closest to Ming and Korea, where some of them were mixed with Korean and Chinese. 2. Haixi Jurchen group due to their proximity to Mongols. 3. Yeren Jurchen, wild people group, inhabited the sparsely populated north beyond the Liao region. Jianzhou Jurchen being the most advanced group, benefit materially and culturally from being allies to the Ming Dynasty. Since the first chief of Jianzhou Jurchen helped Ming's first emperor to secure the border against Mongols, Jianzhou Jurchen had also betrayed Ming when Ming was defeated by North Yuan Dynasty's Mongols during 1449's Tumu Crisis. In a word, Jurchen tribes are opportunistic, and they tend to be royal to the strong player in the region until they are not. When 10-year-old Wan Li became emperor of Ming, Jurchen tribes had been constantly looting and raiding the borders of Ming and Korea. Japanese second division led by Kato swept north to pursue the royal family of Joseon Korea, who had fled earlier to the Jurchen border. Later, Kato captured two Korean princes on August 30, 1592. When a large group of Korean armies surrendered, Kato then decided to attack a nearby Haising Jurchen castle across the Tumen River in Manchuria to test his troops against the barbarian. Kato's army sacked the Jurchen castle, but later suffered a retaliatory assault from Jurchens. Kato retreated to avoid heavy losses. Because of this invasion, rising Jianzhou Jurchen leader Nohachi offered military assistance to the Joseon and Ming in the war. 
However, the offer was turned down by both countries, especially Joseon saying that it would be disgraceful to accept assistance from the barbarians to the north. In future episodes, we will dive more into Nuhachi's legends and how he united and led the Jurchen tribes to become a formidable forces in just a few decades after the Imjin War. I hope y'all can see how chaotic the year 1592 was. Wars being waged on multiple fronts. People of the region are living in fear, poverty, and uncertainty. Korean nation are being sacked, while Jurchen people raid and loot regardless. Ming is already fighting rebels within its border, while trying to aid Joseon Korea at the same time. Japan is sending everything it had across the strait. The TV show Kingdom couldn't pick any better historic era than this. A few years after 1592, when everything is still in despair after war. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and turn on the notification bell for future episodes. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time!